As you can imagine, after we go through the extreme effort of developing our process safety information, spending the time to perform a thorough process hazard analysis and resolve all of our recommendations, developing and refining our operating procedures and safe work practices, and otherwise perfecting our process safety management program, the last thing we want to do is change something. However, change is a necessary part of being competitive and efficient, whether it's adapting to new technology, adjusting the process to account for new information, or even replacing worn out equipment with newer, more efficient components. Change is necessary, and changes to the process will occur. That is why management of change is an essential element of process safety management. It doesn't make sense to spend all of that time initially establishing and managing our process and then do nothing to account for a change later. Management of change is the orderly and defined written process a company uses to discover a change, to characterize a change, to study the change, and ultimately to make the change. This orderly process is required for any change related to process chemicals, technology, equipment, procedures, and facilities that affect a covered process. Now these are broad categories of changes, and a point you should take from this list is that the formal management of change process is used all the time and has to be a built-in process of your company's process safety management system. What is the fundamental purpose of management of change? To ensure that the same level of effort that went into understanding and controlling the covered process in the first place goes into any changes to the process later. Management of change is not a mere formality where certain signatures are needed to just get the job done. Management of change is our control point where we take the time to study the change and its effects and make the change knowing that the change meets the same standard of care we had when we designed and refined the original process. Have you ever thought of the consequences of not performing a thorough management of change process? Allow me to share an example of a change to a process that was not studied before the change was made. Now this example isn't a change to a chemical process, but a change to a testing process. So the project manager, the project engineers, and several of the construction craft were gathered for a turnover ceremony with a local U.S. Marine base commander in Okinawa, Japan, and several other dignitaries. For the past year, this new training facility had been under construction, and now the keys are being turned over to the Marine Corps pending one final test, a simple load test of a, of a beam that Marine trainees would use as an anchorage for their rappelling training sessions. The beam anchorage was designed well beyond any factors of safety needed for its use, so this was almost a ceremonial final test. A test plan had been developed weeks in advance that included a chain sling, a method to apply the appropriate concrete weights to the chain sling, the rigging needed to attach the chain and its sling to the beam anchorage, and a load cell that would verify the load. All of the rigging equipment and the load cell were brought to Okinawa from the United States for this test. Now, right before the load test and the related turnover ceremony, the load cell was found to be a week out of calibration. Fortunately, another calibrated load cell was available at the base's rigging shop. It was brought to the site, rigged to the test apparatus by an expert rigger, and the test began. Unweighed concrete blocks were then added to the sling. The test plan didn't include a step to pre-weigh the blocks since their weight would be determined using the load cell. The next block was added, then another. One of the engineers said loud enough to be heard, hey, we ought to be well over the test weight by now. But the load cell indicated that the load was about 10% under the needed test weight. And as the next large concrete block was readied into position, the project manager stopped the test, much to the surprise of the base commander and the other dignitaries. Something was just not right. The investigation immediately turned to the calibrated load cell from the Okinawa base that was used instead of the load cell that was originally brought from the United States. It didn't take the team long to determine that the calibrated load cell they used from the Okinawa rigging shop was calibrated in kilograms, where the load cell and the test plan required the use of a load cell calibrated in pounds. In essence, the load test doubled the required test load, and fortunately, the chain and rigging didn't fail. 
All of this happened because there was no management of change process conducted to assess the effects of using a load cell different from the one the project team had brought with them. And this was the one they had planned to use. Identify the change affecting process chemicals, technology, equipment, procedures, and facilities. Follow the management of change process. Thank you.